Are you concerned about data privacy while working with large language models? Do you work with confidential or proprietary data? Or just want to customize a given LLM to suit your needs? I've got you covered. My name is Hervé Chimier. I'm a developer advocate at Timescale. Today, I'll show you how you can build a private retrieval augmented generation application, or RAG, using easy and open source tools. I will use Llama 3.2 as my large language model, or Llama as my environment for running, embedding, and generation models, and PostgreSQL as my vector database. Let's dive in. A typical flow of using an RLM involves a query being sent to the model and the model generating a response. The knowledge base of a given RLM is based on the dataset used to train it. For example, if a query is outside this knowledge base, a model is more likely to provide inaccurate responses leading to our estimation. One way to enhance the model's accuracy is through retrieval augmented generation. In this workflow, external information are provided as context alongside the query to help the model generate a more accurate response. In this workflow, there is different new things in introduced. Notably, we have documents, we have vector database and embedding models. These all are third-party um, API requests which are needed and information being sent to all these services, meaning that there is a high risk of data privacy being violated. One way to ensure that the data privacy, privacy of your data in a RAG application implementation or architecture is to build it locally to make it private. In this case, Everything from a vector database, your storage with, with, the, with your documents, as well as the embedding models and generation models, they're all running on your local hardware. Running your RAG application fully locally will not only make your data safe, but also provide you with more control over your data and model management, enabling you to customize it and fine tune them however you like, and also provide you with more faster response times within services making your app more reliable and cost-efficient. Now that we understand the importance of building your RAG app on a local service, let's talk about the tools that we're going to be using today. The two main tools that I'm going to be using to implement my private RAG application include Olama, an open source tool that helps you run large language models locally, and PostgreSQL, a beloved open source relational database, which can also, through its number of extensions, can allow you to store the documents alongside their own embedding and also perform similarity search. Let's dive deeper into these tools. And one thing that I want to bring the attention on Olama is the number of models that it hosts, notably Llama 3.2 which is the model that I'm going to be using as at the core of my RAG application. Llama 3.2 is Meta's latest um, mo large language model. It comprises of four other models, two dedicated to visual tasks and two other ones dedicated to text, or which are text only. And I'm going to be using the 3 billion parameter one. Besides Llama 3.2 being a robust and best performing uh, model, and also a lightweight model of a size of 2.0 gigabyte, it's most importantly open source. Comparable to uh, other models which perform at the same level, it is available for customization, for fine tuning, and for any other operation that anyone wants to do on a local level, which also makes it very ideal for working with and building a private frog application. Regarding an Im my embedding model, I'm going to be using Nomic Embed Text, which is one of the three uh, embedding models that Olama currently supports. And it has 137 million parameters, and it's comparable to OpenAI's embedding and also open source. Regarding PostgreSQL, I want to highlight um, the number of extensions which makes it a good um, vector database and also suitable for the implementation of a RAG application. One of them is PG Vector, which brings the vector data type and vector similarity search uh, in Postgres. This makes it easy during the retrieval uh, part of the work, uh, of the RAG application workflow to be able to get the context depending on the query in a faster way. And 
similar to PG vector scale, which uh, provides more ways for indexing and searching uh, and powering the retrieval part as well. And the most important one that I want to highlight is PGAI. This extension brings all the workflows which were daunting, especially when you're building a drug application, which involved uh, understanding embeddings, how they work, understanding how third-party APIs. But with, with PGAI and its integration with a number of different tools which are crucial in the, in the implementation of RAG application and AI-powered tools at large, it makes it very easy to build and implement our RAG in this process. For example, it already has a good integration with Olama. It provides a number of functions such as Olama Generate, Olama List Models, and Olama Embed, which makes the integration between Olama and PostgreSQL very seamless and very powerful for building RAG up or AI-powered application on a local level. Now that you understand how each of these tools work, and how they integrate with each other and fit into the implementation of a RAG application. We can now start by setting them up and then implementing our RAG. So I'm going to use Docker to run both of these services in different containers. One thing, since we have two containers, which are going to be isolated, we just want to have to make sure that they're running the same network so that you can talk to each other. So the first thing that I do is to create a shared network. I create a shared network of RAGnet and then I, as you can see, I've already pulled the images as I mentioned. Thing to note that we don't have any containers yet running. And now I, cre I can create them. You have to make sure that you create the network and then you, yeah, and then you create the containers. So I have now here the code for now running public image. One thing to note is the tag, the network tag. Make sure that you pass in the name of the network that you have created for the shared one and not also the num the port so that these ports should be available. Otherwise, you can't be able to create the Docker container. Now that we have created it, the next step is to make sure that you have pulled, uh, you pull or you download the different models that you're going to be using. So for us, we're going to be using Llama 3.2 for our generation and nom nomic embed text for our embedding. Since the, that process takes longer, I've already downloaded them, but I'm going to show you the command that you can use. This command will help or will download it if it's not present, but if it's present, it will just update it. So as you can see, we have updated now I'm at 3.2. Now we do the same thing for Nomic. So now we have, I can check now the list of models that you have currently on your Llama service by doing Olama list. So as you can see, we have Llama 3.2 and then Nomic embed text. Now, as you, you can also check like uh, which containers are worth running. So we have Olama and it's running on port 11434 on our local host. You can see by hovering over there, local host, that's going to be quite important. So now we are done with Olama. We have the Olama service running and we have pulled all the models. Now let's work with creating the container for our Timescare DB. So I use the Timescare DB pre-built Docker image. It's just Postgres SQL with a timescale DB extension already installed. And to do that, I'm going to be, I'm going to use this the following command. So we're just going to be using the default values, the similar command to the Olama service. One thing to note is that it should be using imports, which are available. Again, I want to stress that. And the rest is just default values. So Postgres password is going to be password and the user is going to be just be Postgres. So we create it and after that, we can check which, what containers are working or you can just check it from here, but also you can check it with this command if you're just working through the terminal. Now that we have our Postgres container up and running, as you can see on the side here, which is running on, on days on 5432, now we can work on setting up our database instance. So I'm going to use uh, PySQL. I'm going to first check what extensions are installed. Check them by this command. Now we have to install PGAI. Fun fact is that we can install PGAI and PG vector scale at the same time by just one command. But we now install every we install uh, PGAI, but also we install PG vector and the extension for allowing us to work with Python. So we can check again. 
the extension. So you can see that now we have AI installed and then we have also Python extension as well as TimescaleDB. And then we have also Vector down there. Now we have our database, database ready with the extension. And now we just have to prepare the, the container for implementation of our rack. The only thing that is remaining is to make sure that we install a Python client for now our container. So we go into our, our database container and then we install Updeco PG, which is the Python client. Since the rest of the code, I'm going to be writing it in Python and we have set up our Olama service and our timescale service. So this is pre-run since some of this take a while and I just wanted to focus on the code. So we first start with importing the necessary libraries. This is our Python client, allow us to interact with Postgres. And I define like a small knowledge base, which is going to act as our documents. So this is just a list of uh, different landmarks in Korea and they explain it and what they represent. And then we set up the connection. The database, as you recall, when I was like, setting up the database, I noted that I was using the default value. It's going to be important if you use any different ports to so change this. And then after that, we create our table. And one thing to note is just our table is quite simple. It has four columns. So it's just going to be the ID. So a, a unique identifier for each document. And then we have the title and the content. And then we have embedding. Embedding is going to be the vector representation of uh, each document, which is going to be quite important in the retrieval part and the similarity uh, search, which allows us to retrieve the context. And then we have, we set up the, we insert the document. One thing that I want to bring our attention to is this line, Llama Embed. Llama Embed, this is a function that is brought to us by PGAI. So we... As I mentioned, PGAI brings all the functionality, all the workflow of reading embeddings directly into the database. You just need to define the embedding mode that you're going to be using. Make sure that it's installed. And then another thing that I want to note is you can, you have to make sure that even though 1434 is the default one, you should make sure that your database instance knows which host to access the Olama service from. And as you, as I mentioned, since they're working the same network, you're just going to give it the name of the service. So Olama, and then the port that it's running on. Yes. And so now after that, I did a safety check. So in other words, after adding everything to the database, so the documents with the embeddings, I just checked that everything has been added. So as you can see, we have the salt tower, the content and the respective embeddings, which have dimension 768. And this is quite actually very advantageous because you get to have the data and also embeddings. When you have two databases, sometimes you run the risk of having data duplication among other risks. So now we have our query. We have entered into the retriever and augmentation part of our RUG application. Now we have a query and what we first do, we create embeddings for rate. We create embedding the same way that we use Olama embed. So in other words, we're using the same function that PGAI gives us. You remember the model, you pass in the query and then you pass in, you make sure to define the host so that we know where to look. And then after that, we perform similarity search and or context retrieval. One thing that I want to bring attention to is this symbol here, which it represents for sign distance, which is a way of checking, comparing the vector embeddings and checking how close they are. And we just and I just defined that we only want three of them and the top three, but you can define a limit depending on whatever context window you want. After searching for getting the context, we put them together and then provide them to the model. This is where PGAI also makes this workflow so much easier by providing another function for Lama Generate, which just takes in a model and you give it the whole, you define the host and then you take in a query in the context combined together and then you get a response, uh, which you can see here. And I was asking the models to tell me about the gates in South Korea, about all this, just from the context that we provided to it. I'm going to drop down all of the links that I used and all the tutorials. Thank you everyone for joining me today. As I showed you how you can use Lama 3.2, Olama and PostgreSQL, all open source tools, easy accessible and easy to integrate with together to build a powerful RAG application which values data privacy and running locally.